Okay, sports fans, we're back with another great presentation from your instructor, Mr. Samson. <laughs> Today, I want to go to do this Access Bubble 3 exam. I guess, in a way, I guess I'm going to show you how to maybe cheat on this a little bit, too. So let's look at this exam. We'll go ahead and start it here. As you're going through the exam, you start it. It may have things in here you won't be able to do. And you'll see I'm going to have one here in a short bit. And I'm going to show you how to figure that out. So this one's create a new form based on the workshop by type query using the split form tool. So first I have to go in the query and there's forms and deals. Make sure you get the query. I've screwed this one up three times already. Oh, well, this one, the query highlight. Then we go to create. And then we do for, uh, more forms and it's a split form. But you've got to have the right one highlighted to do this. Once we do that, now we need to save this. So we go to up save and it puts the right name in there and we say okay. So some of these are pretty simple if you know what you're doing but they can be you know, go to the 13th record i'm on the second record so down here i just click down here and i backspace out of that and put the 13th record and hit enter it's like a little recorder jumps clear to the 13th record with the participant entry form and form view navigate to the last record so there's a last record button down here and i can just click that and it'll go to the last record so i really like the easy ones with the participant table of dashi view use the find and replace wilcox so i got to be in the last name so make sure I've screwed this one up three times. So I got to be in the last name. Go to replace. I'm going to put Wilcox in here. And then jump down to put Jones in here. And then say find next. He'll jump down to it. Now I'm going to replace that Wilcox with the Jones. So I hit replace. And now I can cancel this and close it. So Jones is one in there. In the workshop, attends by query dash you use the find tool to find the first record bathroom in the workshop type field. So make sure I'm in the workshop type field, go to find, type bathroom, and we got two of these back back, one's in a form, one's in a query. So we go find next, and it'll jump to that record, and we can close that, we've done it. Next one should be a form. I've told you I've done this so many times so that we can go in here, workshop type. You guys think you get tired of your homework. Some of these I have to do three or four times. Now I have that in there, I can go to the next record, but this one here, make sure that's the only thing, because one of them I have to change the max value. This one works. Find the tools is first. Okay, so it's not the one. Oh, I did something wrong there. In the workshop form view, use the find tool to find the first work bathroom in the workshop type field. I did that. I go to find. I go to bathroom. Find next. Should be three of them pop up here. And that's the first one in there. So I close it and it should be good. I just didn't close it right. And you got to hit cancel once you find it. This is the one where I go in here and I change this name here. And so I'm just taking out refresh and it's paint those. Make sure you leave the space, paint those caps. And then you got, I've got this one wrong because I didn't change this to 50. Now to go to the next record, I hit the next record button to put that data in there and it goes changes in the table. And that's why you let people use forms. Delete the name Jack Jill record. So in this one here, we're in this record. What we want to make sure is we go this delete, don't hit the delete button. We have to get the little arrow down next to it. Delete just one record and say, you're only going to delete this record. Yes. Now, data sheet view, the participant use filter by selection, select all records, workshop ID value equals B. So what I got to do is go over this ID field and find one of those records. Doesn't have to be the first one. I just got to find one. So when I go up here to the fence filter by selection, I can say equals that. And then it finds all those. And with this table dash sheet, toggle the filter. So I love this one. You just toggle this filter off. So filters where you're going limiting stuff in your table, whatever by the restrictions, and we just turn that off, then we get the whole table back. Now in data sheet view, use filter by form, select all records from the shop value list. So I got this one wrong. And I know I've did it right one time. So what I did is I've got my little training record, my deal where I got this one wrong for. So I go down here and find this one, right? Workshop equals OTs, that wasn't it. Um, dash view, workshop useful reference. So this one I got wrong. So what I can do is go over here, click this start button. And you got to be careful. This. Sometimes I won't let the training pop up because I still have this up. And so that's the sucky part of this. So normally what I do is over on another computer, I can bring that up. And it won't let this come up because I've already got a pop-up of this up. So that's kind of their way around this one to keep you from doing it. Now I wish I would have looked at that. So uh, sometimes I'll open this up on another computer side by side in the classroom. Then I can go in and filter, figure out how to do this because it's yeah, filtering records. And it tells you too if you have this happen when you get this up. So I can't put you another pop-up, but I can go to filtering records in the book. And the book will pop up and it'll give me the instructions how to filter records. So I can get into the book with a pop-up. 
and it'll go right to that section. And sometimes I can breeze down through it and just see how they did it. So it talks about filtering records, how to, the four types of filter by selection, filter by dash sheet deal. I go in here, and then they usually have examples. So in this one here, they're doing veterinary, and I'm looking for a date. So they do a selection one, does not, does not equals, toggle. So I'm trying to see if they'll do one filter to toggle filter on and off. You don't need that. Okay, clear filters, you don't need that. So it may not take me to where the one I want to do a common filter. This is where it pulls down, and we select all. Oh, okay begins with less than so this is what i need to go to toggle filter so to get that oh we have filters in there okay so let's try this now so let's go out this i'll minimize this go back in here so what they want to do is toggle this date okay so filter by form to select all records so i want to filter by form now I need to go over here to workshop date and I'll be able to pull this down and what they want to filter selected with a record value less than or equal. So first I got to put less than equal and then I probably pick the date of 5-1 in there. If it's not in there, it's not in there. God dang it, I got to do it myself. Dang it, I did that wrong. Let me do that one more time. Okay, <laughs> filter by form. So, oops, not that one. Filter by form. Date pops up. I just go less than equal and then i put that date five slash one slash one 2017. okay let me make sure i check that twice make sure i got that date right toggle the filter and it filters them so kind of gives you an idea and then like i said i've been through this five times and i always get one wrong and i can't remember how i did it last time in the participant table data sheet, it's currently filtered to show all records of the workshop equals this. Save the filter as a query as the query name. So I should, I okay, with the participant table data sheet, it's currently filtered to show all records. So it has a filter on this. So I want to take this and save as. So I know I hit the save as button. Ah, oh, dang, I need to go to file, save as. Try this one more time. File, save as. Now, I want to save object as. So I know I have to pick this. Now, to save the current database object as a new object is what I want. So I go save as. Oh, and I should do query. Why didn't that work? So I'm going to get one more try at this. So let me go back here. I'm going to go in here. I can't go in. I know I got it wrong. To save the filters query. So I'm going to go filtering records into the book because I can't. If I just bring up the training, I could just crash out. And you guys can do that and fly through it where I'm recording this. I hate to crash out because it's three times. So filtering records, yeah, yeah, I did that. And then you know, using the filter by selection, yeah, I understand. It's where we go save to toggle filter, to clear filter, and finally we'll have to use a common filter, to use a filter by form, advanced filter sort, and then save it. So down here, close, should I, da, da. You should have a filters and queries. Yeah, and it'll teach me how to do this. Crash is using wheel, can you apply a filter to Store filter, can you, how do you determine whether type query filter once you use the filter query explains why we want to use them. Oh, uh, this isn't going to show me how to do this. And I might just have to crash out of this to show you. You know what? I give it a one more try. So I'll move this over to my other screen. I'll try this one. So if you show all records that equals that one to save the filter as a query. I know I'm doing this right. So I want to take this and I want to go file. I want to go save as and I want to save the object as another, as a different deal. Save as a client object. Create a copy of this object as a client object. No, I got it wrong. So I'm going to crash out of this. So I can go in there. We're going to go in the training and figure out how to do that right now. So, save as filter as a query. This is how I should do it. And I go straight to practice. And I hit play. She's going to hear my voice. It's going to be loud. Filter for a table data sheet more than once. My apologies. So, I turn her off. I should turn the sound down because it probably just can blur through deal. So, I click this advance. Ah. So, go to the advance menu. Go to filter by forms. What I did wrong. Filters by form. Go to advance again. In the filter by form window advance menu stuff to save. Save as a query. They want me to do it through the advance. I mean they dang it. Okay, now I know how to do that. So now what I'm gonna do, because the gift 
of relaunch. I'm going to close this, restart this assignment. And I did it quick enough that, okay, table, oh, it didn't let me go back and fix that. Well, at least you know how, how to go back and fix that one. We just got wrong. So in table design view of the workshop, add based on supplies, description, and cost per person. So I go to cost per person, go over here, description, based on supplies. And just click off that and it should take it. Move the workshop date field between the workshop and workshop type fields. And I do this under design, but they don't want you to do that. I figured that one out. So I have to click once to get this down. Now I can hold this down and get that move. And I want to put it over clear in front of workshop type. With the participation table and design view, move the workshop ID field so it's between ID and last. And that's what I was saying right here. This is so much easier. When I click workshop ID, then I can just click on it and drag it up to where I want it. Oh, I went too far. Dang it. Workshop ID, when you drag it up, make sure to let go when it's right there. I went above ID there. With the participant table design view, delete the title field. So you just come over here and click on title. Make sure you highlight it, right click, and say delete the row. Yes. In table design view, workshop table, set the decimal. So I need to go to whatever ones, and it's this currency, obviously, and I need to go to decimal place here and pull this down, and I get two. In design view of the workshop table, change the format property of the workshop date fields. I need to be in the workshop date field. I need to right click here and bring up the properties for that field. Oh, you piece of. Sorry, when I pulled it up, the properties are already here in the formatting. So I just need to change this format, pull it down, and I need a short date. I didn't need to right click. I was thinking of something else. Yes, I miss them too. With the workshop table and design view, create a single value lookup field level as the field name. So we're going to create a lookup field. So we need to first name it. It's going to be level. We go over here and hit this down arrow. We want a lookup wizard. Now I will type the values because they want me to put beginner. So make sure you click in there. Beginner. You got to be in the box. There we go. We got it. And you can't misspell it. I learned that one. Tab down. And we want enter. Enter. Mediate. Okay, when I go to next here, there's one of these. Make sure two as the two eyes look if you set the default. Okay, this is the one. There's another one you got to do multiple values. So I say finish and it should be good. And another one you got to check multiple values. Why aren't you wrong? It's probably this one right here. Create a multi value look. Yep, yeah, it's this one right here. So we go to lead, leader, leader of the pack. Okay, I go to lookup wizard, pull this down. I'm going to type the values again. Next, it's going to be long. I don't know where they come up can't unless these are city names. So what am I doing? This leader, long, I guess last names of people. Now, when I go to next year, I got this one. You've got to check this and then go finish. I got that one wrong a couple times. Sometimes I just read too fast, don't read everything. So in the query design view of the workshop by type, use the expression builder to create a calculated field that multiplies the cost by the blah, blah, blah. So what they're saying is when you right click over here, there's an expression builder right here. Bring up the expression builder. You can put the field names in by doing it their way here, but I just go and click on them. So cost per person, that puts that up there. And I could have typed that with the brackets. And then I go times, because we're multiplying this by the max capacity field. So I double click it. So it's cost per person times max capacity. Say OK. Now I run this filter. Got it. Change the workshop query into an update query. So as soon as we do update, it gives us a special update too that we can change stuff in these fields. And what they want to do is go over here and the cost per person field, they want us to update this. So once again, I'm going to put the bracket, the cost. As soon as I type, you know, the brackets, oh, you want the field name? Yeah, I can double click that, put it in there, plus five. And I could just type that. But you ought to make sure the field name is totally correct. No space or anything. But anyway, this is going to increase this by 5. So when I run this, all I'm going to be bumped by 5. Is, yep, 11 rows. I'm going to update. You think you'll remember how to do that on the test? It's pretty easy if you can do it. Change the June workshop query to a delete query. So you have the query already built. You just say delete. So you come across, make the delete query. And this is where you're going to delete. So it says run the query. So it should don't have to change anything. Don't have to set anything up. We're going to delete two records. Yes, you're going to delete two records. 
So that was pretty easy, pretty built for you. If you had to build it, you'd have to put the tables and all the information down below. Change the May shop where you select records where the workshop date field value is in May 2000 into a pin query. So this query is already built. I'm just changing it to a pin. When you pin this, you got to tell it what table you're going to pin it to. So it selects records where the workshop date value is into the pin query to a pin select records to the workshop backup. So when I pull this down, I got workshop backup. Say OK. Now when I run this, it's going to send them records. So it should tell me, hey, I have four records I want to send across to there. Yep. And it sent them four records into that other database. In table design, type cost per fission. So first I got to be in the cost per field. So you got to be in the right field. We'll go down here, we've got input values, default validation rule. And this happens to be a validation rule. So the validation rule is going to be less than equal to 100. And there's no spaces when you do that. Now, how do I just click off that? Then I'll put it in. So it doesn't go in until you click off of it. Change the April query to a make table query. So up here, there's got to be a make table. We see it here. It's first asking me what the table name, and it tells me to create a table name April Backup. So this is going to make a table called April Backup in the current database. So that's fine. I say OK. And it says select five records. So when I run this, I shouldn't have to do anything else. It's just going to go find these five records with that date. It's going to send them five into a new table. In table design view, set the cost per field's required property. So I just go to cost per person field, come down here to require. This should be required. And I can't get to the arrow to change this down here because I don't want to type yet. Yeah, I could have typed yes, but it probably would have worked, but it's just easier to pull the arrow down and pick them. Okay, in this one, in table design, set the default value. So cost per person, I'm going to be cost per person. Default value is going to be down here somewhere. So there it is, set to zero. We type 20, and you can hit your enter key instead of clicking off of it. It will work, too. I usually use, use a little enter key next to you. This one here is a validation text property for the cost per person. So I click cost per person. Validation rules there, but here's the text that we want to display if they get it wrong. And it will be value must be less than equal to 100. So now I can run that query or click off of it. I guess just click on the next one. I'll put it in. I don't need to. With the workshop table dash sheet in the first record, select the intermediate in the next level lookup field. This one was really screwed to me. I figured out this level field. Now let me click here in this first record, pull this down, and pick intermediate. So that one took me a little while to figure out what the heck were the levels and what was going on. In the workshop data sheet, resize the workshop names. So these are easy. You're just going up here and double click and all this data so they can see that. So you just double click that double headed arrow. And he says you can drag 38.2. I just double click. It works so much better. Workshop table and dash sheet view set the calculation and the total row to max capacity field. So what we have is a total here, but right here we need to click on this field and get a down arrow because we're right now doing a total of sum and they want max capacity. In dash eight view, the workshop by type query, add a total row. That's easy. You just hit totals up here. So with your table up, you hit totals, and they'll put a total across there. Hey, we're on 34 or 44. In dash eight view, the first table set the font size. So first we've got to select this whole table. Then we can go up here to font size and change that from 10 to 12. Same way changing the font. We want to first click up here right in that corner, and this selects all. You could also, if you didn't have the select list that was in there, Control A will select all. And I usually use Control A to be honest. But anyway, we're going to pull this down and change it from Calibre to Cambrera. In Dash 8 View, the workshop by type query, sort the record sending order based on the values in the workshop name. So what we can do is we click on that and we say sort A to Z. And that will sort them in sending. And it keeps all the records. That's the nice thing over Excel. Database keep it all. So in a relationship table, relationship tables under database tools. Then we go to relationships. We only have one table. They want us to add the workshops table. So we have to go up here to show tables. We had to double click on workshops. Now close this. Now they want us to enforce reference integrity, and that can only be between two of these with the same name. So I'm going to hold my mouse down on shop ID and not let go until I get the plus sign on this shop ID. This box pops up and force reference to you. If you have the wrong table here, you change this. Make sure it's workshop, workshop ID, and then just create. 
Enforce reference tangly. So we'll go back to database tools, our relationship. They have a relationship here, but it's not enforced. So we just double click this. We say enforce reference tangly tag that there's many of these IDs and there's at least one in each one of this table. So it's called a one to many. And it says a one in this one to many in that one. Add the workshop table to relationship window. So once again, database tools, relationships, go to show tables and double click workshops and then close this. Create a relationship report. So once again, pretty easy. Go to database tools, relationship. Right here, the relationship pops up. And to get this report, usually on the test, will say print this relationship. When students will go up and try to file print, there is no print. You have to first make it a report, then you'll be able to print it. In Dash 8, view the workshop table. Open the sub data sheet for bathroom makeover, which is a record OTB2. So what they're saying, there's a sub data sheet right here. So I'm in the little plus sign next to O2B2. My new Ewok name for my store. In the workshop, I type, edit the first record so that's 50. So instead of 40, we're going to click in here, highlight that, and type 50 and hit enter. Find, use the find unmatched query to which all records workshop table that do not have match records table. This is a pain. I've never used this before. So I figured out, go to create, query wizard. I sure hope this isn't on the test. I've never seen this one. We want to unmatch query, so it's called a find unmatch. Okay, so we wanted to match your records in the participant table, so that's fine. The participant table is highlighted. Ah, uh, stupid piece of tool. I have participants highlighted here. Let me do this again. So I go to create. Okay, find all the records in the that do not have match records in the tables are joined by the common workshop. So all the fields of the table except the default query name view there. Okay. So again, right, you know, I go to create, query wizard, find unmatched. Okay. This is I need to go to workshops. So query create will record tables that select below that have the same number of records. So which table or query contains records you want to query the results? So smash your records table join. So I think I want workshops there. Now I want participants. So it's going to compare it against that one. Now it tells me here that the tables workshop ID, so that's fine. Remember the two linked. Oh, I need to click it. Well, this is my last shot. This hopefully I'll get it right this time. We're going to go to create. We're going to go to query wizard. Unmatch query. Want the workshop table. Next. Want the participant table. Next. I've got to hit this button to put that in there. I forgot to do that. Next. Right here, we want all fields in this deal when we run it. Next. It says to go ahead and use the default query name and view the results. We just hit finish. Yeah, I got it right without getting all three mistakes. In Dash View, it says sort the record sending order A to Z based on values in zip fields. So we just pull zip down, go A to Z. View report. So this is where I bring up my report. I can see what I got wrong. I don't know why I let the report. You'll notice the sheet back behind went closed when this one opens. That's why you can't have these training open. And you'll see I got 98. So I only missed one. Not worth it. I snipped this. Go up there and sniff that 98. I showed you how to fix the one I got wrong anyway, but we'll go ahead and take a snip of this. I keep the snipping on my deal. And this is easy enough to do if you're at home. Just go down here, type SNIP. When the snipping tool comes up, right click on this and say pin to my taskbar. And so I just keep it down here. When I need it, I can just click on it. And then I say new. And for some of you, you're taking way too big of snips. I just need the date, the information here. Go save that. And I always save it with my score. So I have a pictures junk and I just put score. And the date I did it, even though I might be turned into a different assignment. And you'll see I already did this once before today, 1142. Anyway, then I save it, replace that one that I have there. So when I go back in here and I know I was doing this exam here, then I can go submit it into that exam. So. Anyway, I submit that, drop it in there, drop that score in there. So hopefully that will help you get these done. Um, sorry about the mistakes I made.